Hey folks, welcome back. Hope you are all doing fairly well. Before we begin the lesson, I just want to remind you to hit subscribe and hit the like button. That helps a lot. And also that if you want to be on the early release of my test driven development course, you can find the link on the description. And also the link to my newsletter is on the description as well. I would like you to join it. We have some cool things over there. So today I want to talk about data transfer objects and what I like to call standard objects. To give you guys an example, I have this, if, if you watch the previous lessons, um, we've talked about interfaces, about the repository pattern, about how to leverage the container. So I have this really simple payments controller, which just creates a payment using a certain gateway. Then it creates a payment object using some data from the request such as the card holder name, the last four digits of the credit card. Um, it uses the amount from the payment that we just did here. It uses the payment ID from the payment and it picks up the provider from the payment. Right now, this just returns them data. And if we take a look at app service provider, we can see that we are binding payment gateway to Stripe. So we are using Stripe right now. If we go here, it just returns a simple array with just some dummy data. And first I want to start with data transfer objects. One of the issues that we are facing here is that we have a lot of data scattered. So if we take a look at the request, we are setting the card holder name, the card number, the card expiration month, expiration year, and CVV. Um, arrays are great to hold data but when we get into more specific data like this it just doesn't do so well and right now we are not doing many operations with this with this data but if we were to we would have a hard time because first of all we don't really know what's in the request sure we could add a validator here and we would have an idea but it gets hard to do operations and all of that and data transfer objects are a great way to deal with this. So instead of having all of this data scattered and picking up from the request, imagine that we wanted to store the, I don't know, the expiration data as well. We would add more fields here and pick up from the request. What we can do is encapsulate that data into an object. That's what we call a data transfer object. So what we could do is I've already created an object called card. And if we take a look, it just holds all of the card's information, the number, the holder name, the expiration date, and the CVV. And on the constructor, we pass the number, the holder name, the expiration month, the expiration year, and the CVV. And we do this little trick here where the expiration date is actually a carbon instance. So we are parsing this. If we want to do some operations like checking if the card is still valid, or if the card is about to expire so we can alert the user, we can use it. If you are using PHP 7.4 or 8, if it has already been released by the time that you are checking this lesson, you could also have typed properties here. So you could say public carbon, expiration date. You could say string holder name, string number that would make things easier as well. I'm not going to use it because many people are still on PHP 7.2 or 7.3 and this won't work. The reason why we are treating the card number as a string as well as the expiration month, expiration year and the CVV is because we should actually treat them as strings. If we have a CVV like 055, if we were to treat them uh, as an integer, we would probably get, we would actually get 55. If we have an expiration month like, let's say 06, you would get six, all of that. So it's better to treat them as strings and numbers. So we are not going to do any numeric operation with them. We are treating them as strings. And right now I created this static method to help us parse this object. Um, it just picks up data from the request and builds the object. So let me show you guys how this works. Let's run this request. We have everything here. And see how we have the CV like 005. And okay, we get a payment object. So if we were to change this for the card, 
we could say card let's import it from request we pass a request and here we could change this for holder name and on the card number we can see that we are actually only picking the last four digits so what we can could do is put that into a method we could say last four digits if we run this it's going to fail because we do not have this method so let's add it last four digits oops I don't know how to write anymore and let's just say return the last four digits of so as we now have this card object everything's much easier if we want to see what the card holds and what methods it has we can just take a look at the card object if you use an IDE it is going to tell you everything that you can do with this object so let's try this now okay it still works we got the last four digits we got the holder name and we have this encapsulated into this object if we were using a real example we would actually pass this card probably to the payment gateway so we could perform a payment um, and it would be so much easier so this is pretty much what data transfer objects are it's just uh, properly encapsulating data um, when you have arrays sometimes it's just scattered and it gets hard to deal with this I'm going to show you guys another example so we still have an issue and that is if we go to stripe this little dumb data looks like this but if we go to braintree it looks a little bit different instead of ID we have payment ID instead of amount we have total and that's pretty common in the real world sometimes different providers will return different different data in the API therefore you have to parse data you have to map it and that's what we are going to do with another data transfer object that I like to call standard objects because we are going to use it both for the stripe provider and for the brain tree provider if you're interested in data transfer objects I'm going to leave a link on the description from blog post that's not mine but it's a great post it's going to teach you a lot so if we were to go here and change it to use brain tree take a look at what happens undefined index amount we don't have the index amount because brain tree does not return amount it returns total and the way that we can fix this let's let's leave it as brain tree is to instead of return this array we can return an object and I've, I've already created this object if we go to payment not this payment you can see that it has an ID an amount and the provider and we have those two uh, helper methods let me just add the static here then map data from each provider into this object so if we want to pull data from Braintree we use this method it's going to look for the payment ID and the total and if we want to map data from Stripe it's going to look for the ID and the amount now you can see that when you are dealing with data transfer objects it's a little bit of it's a little bit bothersome because you have to map all of your data so if you have a lot of data you are going to end up with a lot of properties um, and it's a, just a little bit annoying to write all of that but it totally uh, makes up for it um, your code just gets so much more stable and much easier to read if you are working on large teams this is very important because you might know what an array has but the other team member might not and when you have it all in objects it's so much easier to work with so let's try changing this to instead of returning this we can say return a payment from Braintree and we can pass this um, so let's try this now we'll get another error uh, what oh yeah we have to change the interface um, Braintree and Stripe both implement this payment gateway 
that we wrote on a previous lesson. It should not return an array anymore, but a payment class. So let's try this now. Uh, the declaration must be compatible with payment gateway. Okay, we have to go here and change this to return a payment. Cannot use object of type payment as an array. And because we are doing this right here. So instead of doing this, we are going to say gateway payment, give me the amount, give me the ID, and give me the provider. You might have noticed that when I was using the array example, the provider was like Raintree or Stripe, but right now it's actually the name of the class. So it's going, this is going to change. I like to do it this way, but we could also um, just use a standard string. And this is what I'm going to do just to keep things um, as they were. But I, I really like using the class name it's a personal preference instead of using um, strings like this because when I use something like Rain Tree class, um, I can actually know what it is talking about. I know that the class exists, and when I use Rain Tree as a string, it's just you know a little bit, uh, a little bit out of the blue. You know, I just wrote Rain Tree. I don't have uh, any num class or anything where I can see all the possible providers. But but that's fine. Let's try this now. And it works. Okay, so that's cool. Now, if we change this to Stripe, it's going to fail because we are not implemented as it should. So the declaration is wrong. Let's go to Stripe and change this for a payment. We are also going to return a payment from Stripe. We don't need a created ad. Let's try this now. And it works. So now we can change it just fine between Stripe and Braintree. And this is actually something that happens if you are serving users in multiple countries. Sometimes you need to use um, different providers. So this is a real world situation. I've used this in the past. And we are now using objects for both things. So I don't use an IDE, but if you use one, um, your IDE was going to let you know that this was going to return a card object and this was going to return a payment object and give you access to all the methods and all of that. So please read the blog in the description. The post is very helpful. It gives a much deeper explanation of what data transfer objects is. I'm just giving you guys a practical example of how I would use it and how I use it in the real world. So thank you guys for watching and see you later. Bye bye.